It was still 45 degrees, but it seemed like 37 low for this. Really? All right, thank you, everyone. I uh, appreciate giving us that time. Uh, especially the team right now, so I guess that was almost a half an hour. Um, so let's go ahead um, get back to the agenda. There's no other uh, public comments. Uh, let me see, make sure everyone is in there. Um, let's go ahead and we have the RFP for the town wide um, reappraisal. So we'll go ahead and open that up. And we only had one bid, and that was from memory. Uh, okay, uh, cost of the total cost of the reappraisal will be ninety-five thousand five hundred twenty dollars. This includes inspections of all property, data entry, sales analysis, and development of schedules incorporated into the computer system mass appraisal system, digital pictures, and formal grievance in board of civil authority rooms. These rates are based on the parcel count of 959 parcels, which does include exempt properties. Beyond this number, parcels will be charged at $100 per parcel. Hearings request, requested beyond BCA hearings will be billed at $150 per hour. Payment schedule. Payment will be a monthly rate of $3,980 for a period of 24 months beginning in July 2022. Sasha, do we have, where, how many places did we send the RFP out to? So all requirements have been met. Right, I think for me, I'll leave the chat here. Reappraisal funds, uh, we have $77,908. So that would be, um, and if we added more, and again, these are payments, monthly payments beginning in July, 2022. So I don't think, um, I think we're, we're set as far as paying. Um, there's, there's, we all know memory quite well, but there's a, um, Appraisals and staff qualifications, if anyone wants to take a look at it or go through. But um, I think, based on uh, certainly here, the, um, the bid and what we heard from uh, Ed Klockfelter mm -hmm. when he came in a couple months ago, I'm comfortable with doing business with, with the company. Uh, it's something that needs to be done. So I move to accept uh, the bid of Nemex for. Um, Ninety-two thousand. Uh, Ninety-two thousand five twenty. Second. Kelly, any further questions? All in favor? Would I? Aye. 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 So we'll go forward with that. Let them all you know. And get a, uh, a contract. You can sign that, please. All right, so moving right forward, we will, uh, we have the regional emergency management committees um, and we have Grace Vincent and Stefan. So Stefan, if you wanna move in. Hi Grace, how are you? Good, how are you? Make sure she's not moving. Can you not Grace, hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, we can't hear you. Um, 
Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I now I can't hear you, dang it. Now you should hear us fine. How's that? Nothing on your side, you can't hear me? Okay, I think we're all set. Okay. Sorry about that. The joys of Zoom. Yeah, that is all right. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, Stefan is here as well. And so what, what do you have to share with us? Yeah, so first of all, nice to meet you all virtually. I don't know if I've ever come to a Moortown Select Board meeting before, so thanks for giving me the time. Um, basically, I just wanted to give you a, a super brief overview of a new kind of emergency management uh, committee, for lack of a better word, that is being formed. Um, called Regional Emergency Management Committee. So this is an effort by the state to kind of make a more holistic approach to emergency management. So including more stakeholders, including the former members of the local emergency planning committee. So LAPC5, if you were familiar with that. So everything's kind of shifting and being consolidated and these new REMCs are being formed. So uh, the REMC for Central Vermont is gonna consist of two representatives from each municipality in the region. Um, and what I'm doing is going around to each town and reaching out to them and seeing who they want to represent their municipality at the REMC level. So the EMD for each municipality is automatically a member and automatically a representative. Um, but the state would like the second representative for each municipality to be a member of the um, emergency medical services community, the EMS community. So. In the email I sent last week or maybe the week before, um, I think some of you were CC'd on that. I included the three uh, point of contacts for the local emergency management plan um, and the EMD is one of those. So tonight I was just hoping to see what your thoughts were on who the second uh, appointee for Moortown could be. Um, there is an option for a proxy, if you don't have an EMS, you know, community member, you know, not everybody has a fire department and stuff like that, but Moortown does, um, you can basically have the EMD serve as two votes if you only have, you know, one member that you want to represent the, the town. Um, but tonight, I was hoping to get your thoughts on who that second member could be. Um, the state would like each REMC representative to be appointed by the end of the month. So I'm kind of doing the rounds of the select board meetings. Sure, uh, thanks. So Stefan being our, our first, Stefan, do you have any ideas, someone in that has that experience to be the second? Right, I wasn't sure um, when, we, uh, when we were emailing back and forth, there was, you know, the other points of contact are yourself, Tom yep. and John Hogenboom. I know you guys aren't in the, you know, in the fire department realm, but as the EMD, I'm, I'm the fire chief. So we kind of have somebody in that realm. So I wasn't sure if, if one of you was an option for that. And that would be a question for Bruce. Do John or Tom, do you have
you know, EMS experience at all? No. <laughs> so, Stefan, since you are also the fire chief, I mean, it, it, you could do that proxy where you serve as both since, you know, you kind of bring both views. The idea for the EMS member is to kind of bring the view of the EMD and also bring the perspective of EMS because like those two groups haven't always been in the same room. Um, so that's the idea behind that. Right. And I, I don't know of anybody that's, you know, actively on my fire department that is actually, you know, also part of like the Madden Valley Ambulance, which is the ambulance service that covers this area. Mm -hmm. Or Johnny, Johnny mm -hmm. or Steve. Johnny's certainly an option. I don't know what his his schedule looks like. Um, and I know that Steve, the assistant chief, is on Mad River Rescue, which is part of the EMS setup there. So I could certainly ask him. I I wasn't sure going into this what the requirement. Is. Sure. No, I appreciate you respecting us mm -hmm. here, but um, yeah, it's it's Steve because he has both, I think would be probably quite good. If not, Johnny would be fine. Um, I, I think there's a, might be, I don't know, any of those other guys that we know that are both on the uh, ambulance. Actually, Courtney and Gaillette, she's on Waterbury mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. So that could be, that's, a, that's probably a great option. I'll have to talk to her about it. Okay, yep. uh, explain to Grace who she is. Uh, so Courtney Guyet is uh, one of the firefighters on my department, and as well as my secretary at the department, but she's also a member of Waterbury Ambulance. So I think that would be an acceptable person if I can get her to do it. Yeah, definitely. In terms of requirements, um, we're aiming to meet quarterly. Um, so the REMC is going to be subject to open meeting law, which is going to make quorum a little bit of an adventure to achieve since it's 23 towns with two representatives each. Um, but there is the option to do like informational meetings. If we don't have quorum, we can just have a meeting where we don't take action on anything. So, you know, if you can't make every single meeting, that's not the end of the world. Um, ideally, it's have, just, go ahead. Can we have Courtney set up in such a way that yeah, we bring her in if we can, but we also can do proxy in her yeah. absence at any yeah. point to work yep. all together. So if she can attend, I can vote on her behalf. Yeah, all you would need to do is like, if you intend to have those two votes at some meeting, you can just email me ahead of time and be like, I'm going to be her proxy for whatever meeting. Okay. That would be great, Stefan. Yeah, I'll reach out to her. Absolutely. And, um, if not, we can down the chain, but it sounds like you have a couple of good candidates. Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. And we by the end of the month for Grace, right? Yeah. Now, will the select board have to decide in order yes. to... Yes. Yeah. So the select board does need to appoint the two people, but, you know, if that's not done by the end of the month, that's not a huge deal. The state just wants to have an idea of who the appointees would be, but you don't necessarily have to have it, you know, set in stone by the end of the month. I know your next meeting would be... First Monday. Yeah. Okay. November first. November first. Yeah. So we could do. Yeah. It. So if you could do something, then that would be ideal. Um, yeah. Yeah. If there's room on the agenda. Yeah. Sasha, can you um, put that on, please? We got that. Anything else, Grace? No, that's it. Oh well, I'm also the point person for ARPA. That's not what we're talking about right now. But if you have any ARPA questions, feel free to email me. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Maybe we'll get you back to a meeting at some point. Yeah. Uh, or, you know, we got a couple of minutes right now. Do you have a minute right now? Yeah. What are you, what are towns doing? Is there a lot of action going on? Or just a lot of talk? Or... A lot of talk, a lot of like dreaming and making lists and talking to citizens. Um, I'm going to a Northfield public forum tomorrow night that they're having, you know, like a citizens public meeting. Um, but the message we're sending right now is you don't need to take action right away. It would be, you know, it, it would it would behoove towns, I think, to kind of make a list and go through like the project prioritization, you know, process really methodically because you don't have to have funds obligated until 2024. Um, 
And there's also a lot of state money that's kind of coming out in drips and drabs. Um, ANR, Agency of Natural Resources, put out some information about what they're going to be doing with their ARPA funding. So I think my general message would be, you know, no rush. You can be methodical. Um, talk to the town, you know, look at your town plan, um, look at other, you know, lists of projects that haven't been able to be funded in the past and see if they line up with the ARPA categories or any potential state funding. And that's what I can help with too. Perfect, great. Um, I'm sure we'll need that resource at some point. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Well, thanks for jumping on. Sorry about the little glitch. No uh, problem. Everything uh, straightened out. And uh, I think everything's worked fine. So any other questions for uh, Grace before she, you know, she wants to stay on all night and do her <laughs> meeting or not? But I, don't, I doubt it. Um, but if not, Grace, thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks. Have a good night. Thank you, guys. You too. Right. Um, Robert is in the waiting room. Robert is in the waiting room. I don't know who Robert is, but he's there. Robert, he's Robert. Oh, that's pretty close. Put her. Are you staying for this next minute? Oh. I just go yeah. I just give one little update to to Stefan to bring back to the team with the garage. Sure. So uh, just on the lighting. So uh, her on electric is he's just been. You know, I've communicated with him and I also asked him to send, you know, just his final, you know, final email proposal to be the same as what we've gotten, you know, his first answer to the RFP. Yeah. But he's just confirming with the company that he's getting in front of their availability and, you know, to make sure that the lighting is going to, you know, be More sufficient. Yeah. And I said, well, efficiency Vermont has also checked it out you know, for what you suggested and stuff. So, anyways, it's just in that little sort of check it out thing. But just to pass it on, they're we're talking talking about the be in November, the beginning of November. Um, we're actually talking about today. We figured it'd wait till the snowiest day of the year and one of our trucks outside. <laughs> 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 yeah. Typically, have that kind of thing. Happen. No, no. But he's, he's planning on uh, hopefully this week in November. Okay. And he'll, he'll be in touch, or I'll be in touch, or Ray, or whatever, so you can coordinate, you know, getting in there with the lift and all that. I'm sure Excellent. you'll be happy to have the lights. So. Yes. Okay, all right. that's it. All right, so um, what time do we have? We have 6.45. All right, so we have, uh, you know, we have the public meeting for the B Trans alternative grant for Moortown sidewalk scoping study. Um, so we can do that simultaneously as we're talking about uh, Stefan's budget discussions. Um, the scoping um, the scoping grants is for a uh, study on the other side of on Route Two um, from uh, Gallagher Acres about light. Uh, mm -hmm. Looking to see if there's um, a good reason to put in the sidewalk there. So this is a step, uh, a great step forward, and it's happened fairly quick. I thought uh, when we uh, were originally talking about this a few months ago, wanting to, to do something with sidewalks on that side. So that'll uh, that'll be ongoing. Um, so we just uh, part of that we needed to have a public forum to see if there's anyone interested. So here it is, and if anyone gets online, we can check. But otherwise. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> no comments from you on the sidewalk, Stefan? Uh, I think that it's good that we're looking into it and, you know, I'll be interested to see, but a maintenance point of view might be a little odd. We might have to contract out as far as making some of the data. I'm just something to think about with that. Yeah, no, that will be, as we're looking, that's a good thing. I don't think anyone now will forget that will be one of the things we're thinking about when we're doing it, but yeah, because it wouldn't make sense to, have you had over on the John Deere to get on there? Yeah, I think it's the whole day to get there. <laughs> so, all right. So, why don't we uh, go ahead? Uh, we have a guest at seven. So, um, fire department budget. Uh, Stefan has sent his stuff. Had it all free. Uh, so, Stefan, you want to share where you where you uh, changed things a bit? Yep. Um, so the the stipend amount for the guys was. 
1500 last year. I brought it up to 3000. I was able to, uh, to find a, a good idea with the guys. We're working on doing like a sort of like a awards set up at the end of the year. You know, everybody gets something, but also, you know, the most improved firefighter of the year will get, you know, something special like a, you know, a, a mug or a, or a jacket or something saying, you know, most improved and, you know, trying to try to reward the, the volunteers for, for the effort they put in. Right. So I think there's $1,500 there uh, last year. Um, and I think 500 of that was what we spend on your, your gift to you. So it was, it was a thousand for the, um, uh, for the rest right. of the group. Right. And so that 3000 include 500, uh, stipend that we give to you as a fire chief and then another, um, 2,500 for special awards and such. Yep. Or I guess we could split that up a little differently if we decide to give you more than the 500 or whatever. Right. Any questions to Stefan on the stipend? Mm -hmm. um, dispatching services? I, I added to that. Um, I know it's going to go up a small percentage this year. They haven't completely ran out their, their full numbers. So I, I figured it was, I know it's going up. So I, I brought it up some. I don't know if that's going to be an exact match of what we're looking at. Yeah, that's, um, it seems, if they're going up, it doesn't seem like very much of an increase to me, but. Uh, you right, and I, I, I don't, and I don't know with them yet, because nothing's done. All right, well, we're not finalizing this budget for a little while, so keep a track of that if you could, yep. uh, and touch base with them to see if they have any final numbers there. Yeah. And it looks, you know, I was looking at the telephone, it looks like, you know, a hundred bucks. Would would be sufficient for next year, you know, assuming there's no big increases. Um, supplies, cost goes up. You know, I added a little there. Do you know where we're at this year on that? On supplies, because that I mean you double them. I mean, I'm, I if, think I think we're already a, either above five hundred or near it. I can't. I don't have it right in front of me. Um, but that would certainly be something to, to look into. Yeah, that a little bit. That's all right. And the radios and repairs, I know I'm at like 1600 this year, and it was at 500. Mm -hmm. Last year, so I've gone over immensely. Uh, so I, I want to try to bring that up to more accurately reflect the kind of money we're spending on, on radio repairs. And Has that been tracking like that, or was that just last year that it was 2000? It's, it's been tracking that way. Often I've been trying to buy a radio a year kind yeah. of thing, just so it's not a large a large purchase. And we end up buying um, a radio for a truck as well as a portable, a radio for a truck crept out after I bought the portable. So then that's where it came up to that and having them program. So did you, so you, you purchased new radios with that, Line yes, because the the, uh, the one that, that stopped working, it would have cost more than the price of a new radio to, to send it back to Kenwood and have them take it. No, I, I'm okay with that. What I'm wondering is whether we try to distinguish, all right, this is what we're costing. These are our repairs here, but let's put a thousand maybe into expenses there instead. So we know, all right, we're actually buying a new radio. So we just so we're accurately reflects of what we're doing with that money. Because otherwise, I think we're you know we're maintaining it for two thousand dollars, and that makes sense. So, do you how much do you think you would spend on a, the new radio if that's what you have allocated in there? Or? Right, it's um, they're running between eight hundred and a thousand. It's kind of the the go to as far as it goes for one radio, and I obviously keep money in there because. They break the battery goes to crap on them. Yeah. I bought a couple batteries this year for them. So why don't we just switch that around? Put two thousand into uh, supplies and expenses. So, and so we'll the, switch it back to right exactly how it was before. And have the five hundred. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's what you said. Yeah, around. I probably this probably had this conversation last year, and I I switched it around, but that that makes sense. 
So we'll even out the same number just so it reflects better what we're doing. Yep. And then we have the next page. And then uh, the fire warning expenses, I draw from the 300 to the 500. It's, uh, the never ending battle, uh, the fire warning thing. We had uh, two wildland fires in town last year, burning approximately nine tenths of an acre, both of them together, which doesn't seem like much, but when you're fighting it and the wind's blowing and stuff, it is. And it's, you know, everybody's been asking for permits and been working with that. And I've dealt some with uh, some illegal burning this year. And I figured it made sense to bring it up with, you know, the rest of the yeah. position. I agree with that. And the only other big thing is this year we make the last payment on our 1996 pumper. So that's sixteen thousand dollars isn't in my budget next year. That's great. Yeah, so my budget went down immensely. There's a caveat. Oh. Um, we have the free SCBA pack. Last year we talked about getting yep. three a year for the next three years. So that's that's coming up, and I wasn't sure if you wanted it to be in the budget or if you wanted to do it as part of it for it. So I haven't done. Anything really with it, yeah. Um, let's figure that. Let's think about that as we go along. We'll okay. talk about that. Yeah, we well, still have time. So oh, you know, that's that that's what we need to figure that out. It's in the budget. Yeah. Okay. And I know. Yep. What's the cost of those again? That they fall I out? think it was like 22000 yeah. last year. But and I don't have for three of them. And I don't know what the prices are again yet. I was right. Waiting. You know, it's still early in the season, so yeah. Ballpark yeah. 25, we call it that, we'll probably okay. Yeah. All right, Stefan, anything else here? Yes. We're in, we've been in discussion for a few years about a, uh, a tanker for the fire department. I know it's on the five-year plan. I don't know where it necessarily sits there, but putting the bug in the air. Last year when I um, quoted it out for the uh, AFG FEMA grant is $350,000. And I don't know if the price of trucks has gone up like I think it might have or not. And that'll certainly waver into it. So that's going to be a, a big dollar purchase. It's something we got to really consider moving forward. But what I will say is it's a, you know, a 15, 20 year truck. So we could potentially get a get a loan out for a for a longer term of time to help keep the cost yearly down. Mm -hmm. Is there a like a surplus or you know, like a lot of towns or like in your larger cities get rid of these trucks and they're not necessarily worn out at the time they get rid of them. Right. I I've looked some there's a you know we get a, a fire trader magazine and it's you know it's like the old the old magazines that have the the fire trucks listed in them. And I'm certainly not against, you know, looking in that that aspect, but they're still, you know, high dollar and you're getting used, you don't necessarily know what happened to them. I'm certainly willing to look into it. No warranty or anything either, right? Depending on, right. on what the deal is with that. Yep. You know, what kind of deal you have yeah. in broker, there's that. And then so then there's there's certainly that aspect of it. How many down tank is it that you're looking for? So we're looking for 2,000 gallons. The 2,000 gallon is the largest that you do on a single axle truck. Right. And we don't want to tandem trying to get into these people's small driveways. Mm -hmm. It can prove difficult. And it, it's a 200 gallons more than a current tanker. So it's, you know, it's certainly, a, you know, 200 gallons. It's 200 gallons. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it, it can be helpful. Yeah. And, you know, the, the truck that we have has been good to us, but it's less and less people that can drive it, much less are comfortable driving it. And it's a standard shift with an old school split rear. So it's certainly a, it's a task, really, yeah. to say the least. 
Are they all wheel drive or? So our current one is not, which is, I mean, we make it work, but it's not the, it's not the greatest trying to get into these places. The, the $350,000 quote I got last year was including making it all wheel drive because we have an engine that's all wheel drive and it's proven to be right. priceless as far as getting into these places. So, if you're going to have an engine, you should have a tank. That can get there too. We kind of work together. <laughs> exactly, exactly. exactly. When I yeah, one's it, worthless without the other. Yeah. Right. And in fact, Northfield just took delivery of literally the truck I was specking out. It would, would make sense for the future of more. And I got a chance to go over and take a look at it. It, it makes a lot of sense. But I, I, How did, did you don't think that uh, grant funding on that or they just. They did not. They said, hey, let's. Let's spend more rich money. I'm guessing. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah they have because they have they have, they have more infrastructure and more yeah more business. But well, the college gives them a, probably a fair amount of money to do those type of things. Right. Yeah. And there's you know there's a few fairly large businesses like John Chops and things like that. Right, they can help out. So they say you know it's I I always hate bringing it up because it's such a it's a well, it's you know, big dollar item, but you know that. We're we're getting to a definite need right now. The existing trucks in 1988, older than I am. Not that it says much, but it's older than I am. So does I am. It's uh, you know, I I can drive standard on my CDL. I don't like it. It's it's it drives me. I don't drive. Yeah, not too new. A long time ago, they were challenged. They were there. And you know, it, I have a lot of you know a lot of younger guys that they can do it. Yeah, but it's you know you start getting on snow and stuff a bit. Sure. All right. Well, that's I think something we need to and, uh, take up with the finance committee as well, or um, people working on the long long term budget, yeah. you know, capital, and figure that one out because I think we've got. Uh, you know, machinery pieces, we're going to have a, a grayer at some point in the next five years, probably. Uh, a loader, a right? Loader, a 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 that truck was was dumping a flow of water and it started pouring diesel fuel out from underneath it. Oh. So we had to turn off, you know, get it pulled out of the way, turn it off. We started it back up, got it back, and it, what it ended up being is there's rubber grommets for the engine and a dry rod because the truck hadn't been driven as much as it had in the past. So those dry rod, and then they were they swelled back up. We've since changed them out. It was 10 minutes it took Sean and I to, to do it. But yeah. it's one of those things that it was a realization for me that right. this could happen. In that specific case, it worked out. You know, we had enough water on the site. We had plenty of way. But two to four years, we need to get something done on that within that time period, I would think. Yeah. And I believe that the tank on that is a Holly um, tank, and there was some interest that the highway department had to use it as a fluoride vehicle for the rest of its life. So it's not necessarily just going to go down the road because the trade in value on it would be dirt. Right. Huh. But it's an option, just that I know not, yeah. not the greatest option, and, you know, but I don't think we'll make very much on it. So it would be something we could repurpose. Sure. All right. Well, let's more. Oh, what's going on? What else is there? Um, so we've been having trouble with the primer, with prime to water to the tank on our <coughs> engine one. And it is to the point now where it won't draft water. So it's basically a useless piece of equipment at the current time. I have a couple of requests out for quotes. I've only gotten one back, and it was 1800 and change. And I still have the money in my budget this year to cover that, but I wasn't sure the board, I wasn't going to the board to, you know, significant amount of money. 
Yeah, well, if it's a piece of equipment you need to fight fires with, it's yeah. not worthy and you get the money in your budget, especially yet, get that done as soon as you can. Okay, I, I appreciate that. That's what it is. Yeah. And then this is a small thing. Um, when Efficiency Vermont came to the fire department, they talked about getting a smart thermostat set up so that we could, number one, keep the temperature lower when we're not going to sure. be there. And also it keeps track. So it's not, there's not always people there. So in the middle of winter, freezing, middle of the night, and the heat goes out, it'll say, hey, you know, it's getting yep. too cold in here. And I wasn't sure how you wanted to do that if, because I still have some money for the building maintenance this year, but I don't know if it'll be enough to cover it or. Why don't you check in and see what that would be? And we can, I'll have Sasha uh, check with the efficiency guys. Maybe they'll be get a rebate on that. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, about. So yeah, we have right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I just, I'd like to get that, especially with winter coming. It's, it's a great idea to have. And nope. Good stuff. And sorry, I uh, took so long. I know that was long winded. So would that be a Kalipsky or would they do that? Oh, I don't know if they install it or if it's just, you know, something simple that, you know, we already have what we need ran and you just mount the thing. I don't know exactly how all that works. All right. Well, Stefan, we appreciate you uh, bringing in the budget so quickly to get it done. Um, we need to get back to you on the, get back to you on the uh, uh, CPACs. And then the, yeah, the budget committee with the with the truck stuff. Yeah, see where they're going with that. Yep. Um, I think we'll be good there. Um, we have Mr. Turner here. Um, and I've been asked to say, we, we, me and him spoke earlier today. All right, very good. So uh, Robert, are you there? I am. How am I coming through? You're loud and clear. Great. You're welcome to turn on your video if you want to be seen. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay anonymous on that score. All right. <laughs> I wish I could do the same. So um, thanks for joining us tonight. And it's been a while since we've, we've started this process. But uh, what do you guys want to share with us tonight? So what can we share? With us? Well, I can share with you that based on the proposal that I submitted back in January of 2020, and that proposal was designed to uh, to, to um, start the process of developing a data capture and reporting system for the town road crews hourly activities. And um, I'd say at this point, we're probably 90% through with the work that I had proposed. And what that means is um, I've created and delivered um, a database system that allows the town road crew to enter their time to track the hours worked on any piece of equipment to add materials used for any project, whether that be strictly town use or what's become evident in this process that grant reporting is more and more important. Uh, so basically this system is, I would say in a late beta stage, we've gotten uh, both Stefan and Martin to enter some data, uh, made a few revisions based on their feedback. I've talked to Sasha, Sasha and Sherilyn about the reporting. Um, I feel like things are going pretty well. The original scope was kept fairly narrow because there were plenty of uncertainties at that point. Um, again, I think we're at the point where <clears throat> once the crew is comfortable entering data, we can eliminate most paper records should we choose to and just go with this digital reporting. Uh, we're not quite there yet because I think we're still at the level of ensuring people are comfortable with that whole process. So we're, we're, doing, we're doing a little testing, I guess, of the database, but, but essentially um, things are going pretty smoothly on that. Um, so, you know, as, as is common in many of these projects, as soon as things start going well, the, the, the users kind of ask about expanding the scope so we can get more, more things done, more value out of the whole system. And we've had those discussions. Um, basically that, that revolves around um, the idea that, you know, it's, it seems likely that each of the town road crew will be entering their own hourly data, which is not a bad thought because it relieves one person of having to do all the data entry. So in order to do that, we really have to think about moving this system 
um, onto a server so that it can be accessed by all of the users. And my design will basically accommodate that, but, um, but as you can appreciate, I'm sure, when we get to that level, there are other considerations like um, you know, security access and, and user accounts and all of those sorts of things that, that we'd wanna include a, an IT person uh, before we move to that step. But I think that's basically where we're at. And I can leave it there and let you ask some questions if you have any. Let me um, first, Stefan, why don't you go ahead and give your perspective. So I started this again um, just over a week ago. It seemed, you know, pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, today I spent some time on the phone because there was a, a version update that we, we got figured out. And where I'm coming from, part of the, the problem that we're running into is I have it on my personal laptop and we have it on the, the town garage's computer. Is my information, I have to find a way now to get it to Martin for him to look at that he has to send it, you know, to the girls. And so it's- So it's, that's what Mr. is talking about. Yes, getting yeah, getting it, interface. getting it interfaced onto a server, which I think would be, you know, a, a great way to go about it. And it seems to be working good. And he talked me through how to make list changes. If I want to add a material or add a vehicle or any of that, I now know how to do that. Sure. And, and it's, I think, it's it's getting usable now. We just there's some definite infrastructure upgrades that'll have to happen. Um, one of those is going to be you know getting it so that we can all enter our data. I think it's equally as quick as paperwork, like as doing a paper copy. If we all have you know, some way to enter that. My idea, and I, we have a little work to figure out, uh, Robert and I, but they have like the Windows tablets might be a, a good option for inputting the data because that'll make it a, you know, a lot easier than you know, one computer everybody's trying to use at the end of the day before they can go home kind of thing. Yeah. And if you had something like that, you could have them in the truck. Exactly. So as we're doing it, we could input it so we're not trying to figure out at the end of the day what we did for 20 minutes in the middle of the day or anything like that. All right, and they can track you with that all the time too, so you know where you're at. I mean, I theoretically, I think that's probably easy enough to do, but you'd have to get cellular data for that on it. But theoretically, we could keep track of it during the day and then only pull back into the, into the shop and save it to the server. Right. Um, Sasha, on your end, you guys are receiving this information. What do you think of the what you're getting? It looks it looks crazy. It's there was a few things that you saw me adding and we it's there, it's just it's got to be right, but it seems like it's something you and Cheryl and we all could use for the, for the school, the running school, the grant, the grant, everything like that. But it's a matter of these guys being able to input. Yeah. And that's the other great thing with uh, uh, server setup. They can go in then and there it is. Right. Or, oh, what, what was such and such doing two years ago on this day? Well, go into that server and that information is there. All right. So uh, Mr. Turner, what, what's the process to move forward some of these with interfacing and um, developing a little bit uh, more to the system? Well, I think um, I, I'm not, um, I'm, I'm a de database programmer and, and, and this kind of application is pretty simple. When we start moving into the server, there are, there are more complications and my level of uh, familiarity with that piece isn't as great. Um, but I don't know at this point whether the town has a server available because there are simple ways to do that. Uh, and then the other question would be, does the town have an IT person that, that it works with regularly that might be able to support this you know, transition to a server for the back end? Um, and so I guess what I'm saying is I need to gather a little more data and then I could come back to the town with a proposal uh, and, and possible strategies for moving in that direction. Okay, so you can uh, chat with 
Sasha at some point, and we, we do have an IT person who works with Butternut Systems, Mike Ketchell, um, is our, our systems and our IT work here. And so maybe we can have you guys, you know, touch base and see what, how you guys could work together on something like that. Yeah, that, that's, that's certainly a first step. And then, you know, I would do that before uh, presenting anything else to the town. Um, so. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and, you know, at your earliest convenience, uh, you know, contact Sasha and she can get you the information uh, that you need and uh, then, you know, put some proposals together for us at the same time working with Stefan and the, the guys at the garage to finish up what we're doing. And, but with the thought that we would move forward with some kind of interface um, for everybody. Sounds great. Good. Um, and and on, on that type of thing, again, now that we've got this kind of rolling, it's been a couple of years, it seems like we've got some momentum that we can move forward uh, as soon as possible on that. That way we can even put some budget numbers this year in. So if we're looking at um, you know, laptops or something like that uh, for the trucks, we'll, we'll have that. Understood. And, and I know budgeting season is right around the corner. <laughs> it sure is. We're working on it now. So I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, if, unless anyone has any questions, we can move forward and you can get to your evening. Okie doke. Done. Well set. But, all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So long. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. That's, that's pretty we're so step on it sounds encouraging. Yeah, I, I was a little bit skeptical uh, before today. I, I you know I got a chance to get him on the phone and we talked through it and he showed me how to how to make some changes because I had some concerns because the, the road list was a uh, was an older list like uh, Jacob's Road Brownsville. It comes up as Jacob's Road even on the Brownsville Road, like mm -hmm. Hoover and Lover's Lane. So I was a little concerned about that. Like, do we have to call him every time and have a do this. Right. He, he showed me how to go into the list and make changes as needed to make it make sense. So then in the future, I can put in the road numbers that we have set up for, for all the roads in town. And so I, I think it's it's a usable thing now that I finally see well, the, the innards of it a little bit. I think everyone will, will have to be some trial and error with it. Yep. And, and, and I found a couple things that didn't work. Like I couldn't input, you know, the, the material. I couldn't figure out how to put in material. Out of it. Well, you show me just go into the list and you can form that and then it's in a drop down box for the next guy. Sure. All right. But that's where it comes into getting it on a server. So I did that on my computer. So now I'd have to go to Martin's computer and do it completely separately from mine. And then all that data is kept in two different places. That's why the server that'll be a that'll be a huge step. A server or some or some way of outgoing. Right. I think prior to that happening, if you could have you seen you've got the administrative handle of this thing? I do. I, I seem to. Oh, well, if you could sit down and march through with him and show him how to, to make those changes to add to the list or the sand or whatever, you know, you're adding or yep. do it for him. It's good to show him. You yeah, know. absolutely. I know he has, he has some idea about the list. Robert kind of showed him and right. I, I wasn't right there. But if you're working together on it, maybe so you make making sure that something's not getting really with the falling behind that could be yeah. um yeah i think it'll be i think it will be good it's it's a little you know it's been rocky and like today when we did the upgrade because i didn't because he built it for more of martin's machine mm -hmm. i lost my data for the last week that i was doing but i have it on paper so i can i can re-input that data for when it's time to you know do another attempt to send it off to the office you know, fairly quick now, but it definitely, it's, it's a little rocky, but we've made immense progress in the last, I'd say, week and a half. Good. Well, keep working at it, because um, I think you, at the end of the day, you know, or the year, if, it'll be a lot easier, and, and you guys will have a lot more information in your hands, so when you're doing things again, you can say, oh, we needed, you know, so many hours to do that job here. Right, and, and as far as the, you know, necessarily having them in the trucks, like, 
you know, we're filling up with sand at the end of the night, waiting for the next guy in front of us to fill up with sand. All right, now my opportunity, you can go in and get most of that stuff all filled out instead of right. get out of the truck at the end of the night trying to trying to figure that out. I no, you can probably be more efficient uh, during your day. Exactly. And I think it'll be I think it will be great in all aspects for the bookkeeping, for, the, for us inputting the data, for going through and figuring out which coverts were changed when potentially it would be a new list, but we'll, we can get there. Just right. so it would, it would, he would need to work on it to get you know that involved. No, I think it's good. And quite frankly, it would be accountability um, or for you guys. So I mean, that's good on our, again, not that we're right. going to micromanage people, but you know, it's nice to know, all right, these, you know, people ask, what are they doing? Well, in the click of a, you know, one thing. And, well, yesterday they were doing this. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah, also to be able to look back and see historically what happened on um, a certain road and then like, well, we can't keep fixing this like this, you know, it's taking, you know, let's do this. You know, right. So. And if we do, you know, with the server, if we do a cloud backup every year, every six months or once a month or whatever, you know, God forbid a, a super tornado comes through this building, we haven't lost all that data. Right, yeah. There's still some, some historical data there. I mean, more like once a week or even. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, <laughs> once a year. To, <laughs> right, right. The probability of it going to crap is, is slim, but you're right. It's All right. Well, that's, that's good stuff. I think technology it's, is moving forward. Yeah, and, that's right. So we have to I guess. So, so are you, are you doing this data entry every day? Mm -hmm. Every day I, I input. You know, I'm still doing my normal paper sheets, mm -hmm. but I'm as well. That, as at the end of the day? Um, it often is. If I don't get to it at the end of the day, I do it early the next morning. Okay. I, I just sometime within the next week or so, I, I want to go over there and take a look at that. And yeah, absolutely. Maybe I can to, you know, have an idea. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd be more than to show that. I'll be, I'll be in touch with you. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I think it's uh, I think it's a good step forward. <laughs> it's finally progress. Yeah. We got, we got slowed down there. Uh, happens. All right, Stefan, I don't want to move forward so we can get home and see the Red Sox. A kinky show. I, mean, I think that's <laughs> all for me. All right, well, you're welcome to stay around. We've got uh, the Quartz Communications. I'm going to start over here with Sasha. Sasha, what do you have for us tonight? Um, so, the invoices that we missed the last meeting, um, we have to your And they're in this here? Yep. Um, okay. Planning Commission minutes all up to on the website. Right, the Travis was yeah. looking for. And I sent out an email to Franco at CAI for the Ira Hatch thing. And he got back to me Friday and he said he wasn't going to have an answer before tonight's meeting. So okay. Good. Thank you for following up on that. Is that it? John, what do you have for us? Okay. Um, first thing is on the hearing on Thursday. Um, I have not heard back from St. Patrick's, um, but it's pretty clear that that pipe, the outflow pipe, is going to be on the property of St. Patrick's. Okay, so. um, it does not look like it's on Holland Browns, but I know that Holland was expecting to uh, attend on Thursday, and Greg will be there too. Okay. And um, so I'll just say I, I, I have seen that it be any problem with St. Patrick's, and before it just took a while to yep. get, get to the right people and so on. But I think I have the right contact. Me, so um, so we'll get to see on that. Um, and um, I wanted to check and see about uh, cutting down the black cherry tree that's right at the end of the of school street here. And um, it's right on the property line, I guess, between Eugene and, and uh, the town. Um, and Martin does not feel comfortable with all the wires and everything taking it down. And it is, it is on its way out. Sooner or later, it's going to start dropping you know, big sections of it. So 
you don't have to have them. So at any rate, uh, I guess I uh, just, just put out for an RFP. Yeah, yeah, take that down. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and uh, let's see. Oh, I um, spoke with Michael Brown. He's a, a well, among being a lister, he's a forester. So he, he would be delighted to help out with the uh, forest management plan up back here. And um, so um, he wouldn't be able to do much on it before, uh, he said late winter, January, February, maybe you know, a little bit later, but so I think that fits all right with our time frame. And so it's just a matter of, Assembling the other people that would be on that uh, that committee, um, and so now since we're also doing this public meeting for VTrans, um, I reread all the, the emails between Joyce and us and all the various people at the state and everything, and um, I was wondering about the village if we're going to move forward on anything there. Um, now, my understanding is that the, the barracks said that they might have one of those movable stations. So can we look into that? Yeah. Yeah, so that would be better than, it sounds like it, we'd have to go through quite a bit to move the permanent. To pull one leg like down at the yeah the, right down by the effort. Right, yeah. <clears throat> so that would I think that would be ideal if we could get one of those. Um and oh also on the scoping study, they they throw out some numbers like cost like forty thousand to do a full scoping study for study for the uh, Gallagher acres or for the North Moortown sidewalk. And so I'm just wondering about if that's the case. And if so, would the grant cover that? I would imagine. What part of the grant is that we for? Or the, the, yeah, the um, alternatives grant. Okay, alternatives grant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, certainly, before we move forward with anything, we'll make sure that's the case. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I would think it would. Yeah, yeah, I should think so. It has in the past. I mean, it has in the past, I believe. Uh -huh. yeah, okay. On the other side of the road. So okay. I would think that yeah. on the same line. Yeah, okay. That's good. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's all I have. Thank you, John. Okay. Ray, how about yourself? Um, just had, one, uh, had that meeting with Suzanne Smith over on uh, Smith, right? Suzanne yeah. Smith on uh, Moortown Common Road. Um, she was having that yep. problem right. with her lawn. Martin and I met with her last Friday, and uh, we don't believe it's a town problem. I think she has a spring problem in her lawn. And um, what I was going to do, Sasha, is I'll send you an email tomorrow that you can send to her. You know, Because after we talked to her, Martin and I looked at it, uh, she's got a broken foot, so she wasn't able to walk around. But Martin and I did, and uh, right in the middle of that bad section of lawn, it's really, really wet, and it, you know it's quite a quite a quite a ways off the road. So we're pretty sure there's a spring in there that the problem that's a problem. So you know, and we kind of hinted towards that when we talked to her. So this would not be a surprise to her. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to get that. And let's see where can I go. Don, what do you have for us tonight? Um, well, this would be, I don't know if we, if we do this in all business or in reports or communicate, I just update it. I mean, I don't have any follow up or anything. I could just tell you we had a, uh, an event at the town hall yesterday to engage the community and show people what we'd come up with. Probably had about 20 or so attendees and, and of course there was the five committee people members who were there. We're going to be doing it virtually Thursday night, so sort of the same presentation, but we marked out on the floor some of the different uh, possibilities of stuff that we found out from the 
study with the engineer on, on life safety and ADA codes and, and then how um, you know the basement could be utilized and how uh, the first floor could be utilized. Um, and they've got a lot of input. We had people similar to what we did at Northfest indicate what kind of things they wanted to see there. So we're correlating that now. And then after the virtual uh, presentation Thursday, then we're going to meet again next a week from this Thursday on the 28th to review next steps and procedures of when the committee would come to the select board and share with you what we've found out. So you're getting, are you getting a um, variety of people, not just the same people? And oh yeah, same, it was. It was, was pretty, it was, yeah. yeah, it was, it was a pretty, it was all a diverse. Good. It was pretty diverse, yeah. Good, all right, that's what we're looking for. What else, anything else there? Oh. Uh, no, I don't know if it would be something under, I was just going to bring something up that's kind of new. So I don't know if that would go in the new business. That so. would, it's all new. We'll okay. Wait for that. That's good. Uh, Kelly, how about you? Do you have anything for course communications? Nothing. Nothing. Um, so stuff that we knew, I guess. Uh, oh, yeah. So for me, oh, there you go. You're <laughs> paying up. I don't think I have anything that's perhaps a uh, new business as well. And some budget stuff I want to talk about, but um, so that's all their announcements. But we do have the select board minutes. We can go ahead as we're on this agenda. I don't know if people want to. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 10 4. Second. Any further discussion? None. All in favor of or aye. 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 All right. Um, old business. Um, did you have anything or uh, you, you said you had some new business things? Yeah, no, uh, good. John, anything old? Nothing else, no. All right, Sasha, uh, nothing for you? Nothing that we haven't uh, looked at below? All right. Um, I guess I'm good. I, have to, uh, I guess my new business, uh, I'll start with you. Go ahead, John. Well, I was just wondering if uh, I wanted to just ask or think, see if, what people thought of uh, if they, or if this is already happening, but a way that with, with, with all the various committees in our town, if there's a way that we could, you know, have a way that we could communicate to those, either the chairperson or the people who are on the committees, that so if something was going on, like, you know, let's say like this town hall meeting that we had, I could have, you could send something out like that. If, 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 if whatever can, rec committee was doing something and they wanted to let all the, you know, mm -hmm. at least in that circle of people who are involved with the town, if there was a way, you know, to communicate with sure, those people. Some kind of an email list. Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and maybe other people would want to be on it as well, rather than like, oh, just look at F Front Porch Forum or look at the website. If there was a way that people wanted to be notified about something, I just I don't know what that will look like, but just something for us to think about. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there's kind of a, what you could shoot out like a newsletter or whatever happened to be. You yeah, know, if you had something that announcement, wanted, just announcement yeah. out to the. I think Sasha, maybe that's something that you can think about. Um, you know, all the communities I think that we have. Than all all their contact information, anyways. Um, you know, maybe we could have a site on the website where there's links to the committees. So if you wanted to send with that work, I, that? I wasn't checking. Like I went you know, to the website because I went, oh, maybe I could reach out to all the chairs, right, and send them this thing that I yeah. had an attachment saying about the town hall thing, and we went there, and then, you know, of course, maybe it's just. You know, want their emails weren't there, but then again, maybe they someone doesn't want their email. <laughs> right. you know, know, we you could know. check with that, but I think most people are doing this to have a public email that we yeah. call out who is on answer this or whatever. But, and you can set it up so that you don't see everyone's email. So it'll go and it'll say like, like I'll get emails all the time and they'll say my name, 
but yeah, it's, it's like not, a broad it's a spectrum. Copy, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. That's how they do it for emergency management. Yeah. It's called all EMD direct. Right. That's all you see. Mm -hmm. All right. So spare time, if you could think about that. And maybe if anyone has any ideas, maybe John. Yeah, so we're just going to think just, about it. All right. This is what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah. There's got to be a way. Um, and then we can even talk to our IT guy. How do we best make this list so that you can make it easy? Because it's nothing worse than having to start searching out to get everyone's oh, yeah. together. I mean, let's hear a way that we can query them. You know, you just, all right, I want all, and it can't be that hard with what technology that we have. Yeah, I mean, something comes up even in our, our board meeting and we go, oh, well, you know, it would be good to just get this out to have people thinking about this or be involved in this or something. Yeah. Well, so, I think that's good. Um, I think my business really, it's, it's about the budget stuff. I did talk to Stefan earlier this week. Um, we were just talking about general uh, pay and uh, you know what the guys are doing and so i i think it's it's a good idea maybe that uh during this budget season maybe ray and i we can sit down and talk to the guys at the garage and, and the ladies here and, we're, and i think we need to reevaluate where we are with our, our pay uh based on you know what's happening in the economy um you know and the employees that we have we want to make sure we retain them Mm -hmm. um, so I think we need to look at everyone, uh, see where, you know, we have our annual, we've been doing 2%, I think is what we've been doing pretty much, but it may be time. And I know two or three years ago, we did an adjustment, um, and we may need to, I think we need to do that again. And there'll be some, you know, we'll just have to figure out where the water, where, the, where it levels out, but I think everyone's probably due a, a, a raise and, you know, uh, Instead of doing like a 2% increase, would it make sense to do like a flat rate across the board? Like every year there's, you know, 50 cents or 75 cents in there. Because if you look at 2%, 2% of someone who's been there for a while who's making more is going to be a lot different than one end. So instead of trying to group everyone and get everyone maybe a little bit closer together each year with that two percent the gap is getting bigger and bigger and bigger so then your person who's still in essence making closer to the bottom is not really ever catching up to that but if you did more of like a flat rate every year then that difference is kind of lessened in between right i mean i'm, I'm not even proposing I think we have, we can look at that, but for what I'm thinking of is, is more of a, uh, uh, just an increase, you know, a job performance increase type of thing but I, I, at this point. And, but I think we can look into on our annual increases where we do 2% mm -hmm. and we have that, all right, does it make sense to do a flat, what, what you're saying? And, I think there's arguments both ways on that. Um, uh, just gonna, uh, you know, we can look into it. There's, you know, you get more when you earn more, but there's reasons why you're there and earning more. You know, you, you have more responsibilities. Um, you do more things. And, and personally, I'm not, I'm always, I don't always think you have to, to make it the same to be fair, you know, fair is, doesn't always mean it's always equal to, in my mind, but mm -hmm. we can all talk about that. And, and, um, but, uh, cause I don't ever think the guy that's, I mean, I don't think ever that Stefan is going to be making what Martin is. It, it's, right. That gap should not, there's always going to be a gap there exactly. because there's different responsibilities. Um, one thing with that gap is, you know, say this year we do two percent. It's two percent, seventy-five cents. Let's say right. It might be two percent, fifteen cents. So then next year, his two percent of that seventy-five cents higher is a lot more than my two percent of my fifteen cents higher. So the gap just keeps expanding. Yeah. 
And, yeah. and we were talking about it at the garage a little bit, you know, just in future ideas. And we we're thinking, you know, take the two percent of, of the guys and spread it like whatever part of two percent, my two percent, Rodney's and Sean's, and whatever that mean number is. Right, divide that by the four. Right, four. right. Take oh, your oh, seventy. Oh, but there's take your fifty. His seventy-five. His sixty-five. And his thirty-five. Right. Yeah, add together, and like then fifty-four the cents or something. But that, yeah. But, I mean, but I, you're, think, you're, I do agree with what you're saying too. It's you know, it's not necessarily, you know, the, right. I mean, so someone that's been here twenty <laughs> years and working, and why should I, on an annual basis? Why should I still get the same raise as Junior, who's been here two years? Right. Really. You know, I've been here 25 years. And, and all you, you appreciate me so much, I get the same. Same as, as him. This, this yeah, right. Guy right. Just so people aren't going to, you know, you guys yeah. may be a little bit different breed because you all seem to want the same. Even Marty doesn't want anything more than, but if you have different responsibilities, I mean, that's, those are the things. But I mean, I'm certainly open talking about it with the board and with everyone you know whatever is the best but my my idea is, is to first go in and and look at everyone's what they're making today and say all right we need to move you up and we may say all of where we want to do the same across the board and this in these cases that's where i more all right let's do the same across the board rather than um to try to Give Stefan, you know, money to, to close that gap between him and Martin because that it's not fair to, to Martin. So much of what we've done in the too. past, like looking at other towns, seeing where they are, seeing where we are. Kind of. I, I think we could do that. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt, but uh, I want to make sure that you know we're compensating our guys to what we think they're worth, not some other towns what they're worth. But right. I don't want to be under other towns. I'm more. You know, yeah. every day they're sending us higher and higher and higher and higher. Yeah, it's awful right now. Everybody's doing it. Yeah, across the board in any in any field. So I mean, we should reach out, and, and I would like to see the same for um, office positions as well as you know everyone. Within the area here, because I think that gives us a little bit. We're not a lot of different size. I mean, there's, I guess we're a little bit smaller than some bigger than others, but regional area, I mean, because if anyone's going anywhere, they're not going that far. So let's figure out what, what our competitors are paying. And uh, I think yeah. at the end, like a couple of years ago, we ended up being on the top side of everything yeah. after we, we did everybody. Um, so we just want to make sure that we are continuing to pay top wages uh, along with the great benefits that we have and we'll continue to get good people to work for us. Just have a few good years before retirement. You? <laughs> I hope so. Um, sure. Who sets the rate for you guys? I was just going to say that. I was always told the otter news. But uh, you know, I don't think there's been a change in the rate. But yeah, since I was on the well, north, the last time I was on, it was the same before the rate. When was the last time you had the rate? Oh, it was it was a while back. We went from four fifty to well, originally when I first was on, the chair got five fifty, and everybody else got four fifty. And then I, I said I didn't buy that. That was that was, uh, was thirty three years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> at that point, I didn't think that the share should be paid more. So, so we yeah, kept it at four fifty. And then a couple of years after that, we decided to raise it to five. I don't. I think it's probably been there since the early nineties. I think should be able to get that. I was, I was on the board with you last time. Yeah. Was five. You know, and that's one thing when you talk about getting diversity on the board, too. If it, you know, there was more money here, you, you probably have other people that could, I would say, all right, you know, if we're, I don't know, I, mean, I don't know, I mean, this is again, it's a volunteer position, but then sometimes you, you do, 
we pay a lot of other people that do a lot of the like volunteer type things pretty good money here. Mm -hmm. And I'd say this board puts in more time than probably most. Yeah, not uh, just these days. Oh, I mean, this, the is the, this is the this is the quick and easy stuff in my mind. Right. Right. Um, I mean, you look at those email lists that I mean things that we get from. I mean, you can take you know an hour a day to read the string of emails to if you want, and I think you really need to. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, you can't come here and be involved in the conversation and know what's going on. You can't every day. I mean, I don't I didn't save it for different. And then sometimes you do scan and you this and that, but it, it's a fair amount of time of yeah, taking it's... calls or you, like Friday, for instance, meetings. there was, or other meetings that people are doing. You're running that thing. John has been putting in a shh. Uh, <laughs> a ton of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm his going to the for this stuff, I mean, he called me last Thursday, Friday, but I just, again, I was busy and I had other, we just seem to be able to pick up different things here. That's good when you're here on the boards, people pick up, you know, whether it's taking calls from this or that, but yeah, I mean, there's a fair amount of yeah. um, effort. So, I mean, maybe that's something we can look at and see when, you know, what other towns, what other there, towns do yeah. and, and even even VLCT. What? Know, <laughs> what? Is it? My mom gets well, she's over in Duxbury, right? How many members are on that board? Three. No, I think five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Five. Yeah. five. Yeah. I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly yeah. certain. I wouldn't say I'm a hundred percent, but I'm I'm a good ninety. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, fifteen hundred two thousand a year probably won't be. Yeah, exactly. We all started driving new vehicles yes. and such. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. I'd like so maybe Ray and uh, you and I can try. Uh, I know you wanted to get to meet with him on the software. Maybe I we could do that. Where I'd like to see that as well, um, and then just talk to you guys a little bit. Um, you know, I talked to Stefan. Even though we're, we're not, they're not say we're. We're not good at all with any type of reviews, really. I mean, which is not great for our employees. I mean, we we try to give you feedback when we can, um, but you know, maybe you just sit down and speak right. and make sure that you know everyone's on the, the, the same page. I used to be able to stop it more, but I haven't. I've been so busy. I haven't. You know, with COVID, you, you just I'm not sure what the hell's going on. So I was more in tune to everyone and more on a daily basis. But, you know, you know, I just drive by and make sure they were in places and burn down or something that's it's working. So yeah. um, but we were lucky and we have good employees. We had uh, down there at the garage and you know we were in this building. Mm -hmm. We've got people that show up every day and they do, uh, and do a good job. So we do Thanks. So um, that's all I have with, with new business. Um, One other item, um, and uh, since our next meeting is the eve of the election, um, and we, I know that Tori Smith has reached out, I think, to all of us. Um, are you taking any position? Or anything you want to talk about before, before we vote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess uh, you know we, we could have asked our reps to come in at some point, but yeah, next, I think Monday night is that our next meeting is okay. Yeah, so that's, <clears throat> so what is what is everyone thinking? Does everyone have opportunities to read through the the bond proposals? Well, I think 60 is it 60 million you're asking for? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, yeah. so that's a lot. That's I heard somewhere it's an 11 percent uh, increase in yeah. Yeah. yeah, and, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a lot of money. Yeah, no, it, it is. And I mean, Tori, Tori Smith gave, gave the example that if your house is a $350,000 house, you're only going to look at an increase of $500 in your taxes. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's so a lot. So it's not a fixed income. Right. That's, 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 that's almost two trucks. Yeah. 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 It's, it, just, it, it really takes away from what, as a town, what we can do, because now, again, it's a whole issue, but throwing all this at the school, we want to do stuff as a town, keep our town up to great, like be our employees, yeah, good salaries, and we can't do that and keep our tax rate exactly. livable. A wage, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's. I mean, you know, we're, we're back to the same place we were were at two years ago. There are certain things that have to be done tomorrow. There's no doubt about it. Uh, they're out of compliance, and and there's safe, safety items. Um, yeah, okay, maybe they need a new gym, but it's not a safety item. So, I mean, I, I, my feeling is, you know, do it just like it has been all along. Do what we need to do to get things, you know, up to par in, in Harvard. And then, you know, down the road, look at some of the other things. There's, there, there certainly needs to be upgrades to their facilities. You know, the gym, I, I don't know. I haven't spent much time in the gym. One of the other things I saw was a proposal for, for track and such. That needs to be done. I find that, you know, the, the, they don't have a, a track up there. No. Really. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of infrastructure stuff. I don't know what, what is their exact, they're going to do with the administration part of um, where the seventh grade used to be. Is that, is uh, that where they're? I don't, I, I haven't seen anything about that. There really hasn't, I, I think the, where the, if in fact it goes through, where the old uh, middle school, that space, I think is gonna be, you know, they're gonna be expanding the high school into that space. Oh, into that space. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's you know, what's gonna work. But I believe there is money in there for profit, look. Well, there's yeah, definitely money in there for Crossing Brook, yeah. And I don't think it takes off the, uh, the this seems to me that it's still on the, on the, on the uh, agenda to, to take the fifth and sixth grade out of more town. It yeah. seems like that's I, I, down the road. Yeah, I think the uh, probably the main reason for that would be, would be um, space. Space issue rather than expanding more town, we'll just shift the five and six out because we know that it's going to it's going to be overcrowded. What more town or more, more, more town? Yeah. All, the, all the kids are still running around more fast. Really, think it's going to be overcrowded. <clears throat> I think people not. like more town. They move here because because we are are what we are. I think you're. I think there's a target on the fifth and six here that has been that. I don't think that's moved to call. I mean, there's a little lip service on here and there, but I think that's the ultimate goal is to, to move them out to yeah. um, whether it's Wastefield or, or such. I'm not sure where they would, would go. Yeah. Um, it's funny, I haven't had a lot of people talk to me about it. No, I don't. Yeah. But then, you know, I, I would expect more discussion about it. But how about? So I know um, I want to say I'm not I'm not a hundred percent positive, but I'm pretty sure that um, Kristen's her and her husband purchased land right above us, so they're working on putting a camp in. And Sean's been going up and talking to them, and I guess some of the feedback from what he heard and they were talking about was it cross it broke the pods that they were looking at putting in are actually what they use to house prisoners. In so, so are those temporary pods you're putting in? Yeah, yeah. they're movable. Yeah. But that's in essence the company that they're getting them from. That's what they advertise them for, is their right, prisoner sure. pods. But, which yeah. Why well, have why well, have temporary space, you know, for, for kids where we already have permanent space? Right. I mean that's so <clears throat> Do the upgrades that you need yeah. because do they need a new gym? Yeah, maybe. Do they need a track? Yes. Does the building need work? Absolutely. Yeah. But you yeah. have the space. Yeah. Utilize it. Yeah, I, I, I really um, 
tough one year. I, I mean, I, as a community, we need a good high school and something that our kids can come out of and be competitive with. Um, but $60 million is, is for this community, this size. It is. And you're talking, you know, someone's tax bill going on three to $500. Mm -hmm. um, on average, I would say in our community, you know, you start looking at our grand list, and, you know, especially after this reappraisal, you know, yeah. the, the, the inexpensive homes are going to be in the 300,000 range. Yeah. And uh, I mean, all your, your highway products, your gravels, your pipe, they're, they're going out of sight. You, you know, it's. Yeah. And inflation has been unreal on that, those type of products. I mean, everywhere. Go to the grocery store, you know. One day, you know, mm -hmm. things continue to rise. So, you know, everyone um, look at it, use your conscience, and, um, you know, try to um, really read it and see it makes sure, make sense of it, I guess. Yeah. Because yeah. as a board, I don't know if we really need to come out with any. No, I, I, yeah. I just, yeah, I just, I know that. That's what I said. I said, Tori has been asking for that. But. No, I think they were certainly looking for an endorsement on it. You know, I, I'm, one, I'm, I'm, I've read it, I've been through it, but I'm just not familiar enough to one way or another, you know, say, you know, advise my constituents, but I would advise them to read it very closely and take a look at the numbers because there are other numbers there. They did a good job with that, I think, as far as giving you those scenarios, is, you know, what your house. Yeah. And we were doing an informational meeting tonight too. I believe it started at 6 30. So yeah. they did have that. We did get the link to that today. So um, yeah, but that's a good good thing to bring that up, John. It's worthy of good thought. Yeah. If anyone um, needs their ballot, they can contact. Uh, the, the office here and it can be sent out. When we continue to send those out, we bring up until the end of the week. Yeah. All right. So there's an opportunity for people to get them in the mail, send them back, or we have the drop off right here. So um, it's ample opportunity to vote. Um, so we just had a few things to sign. Sasha, why don't you make sure that we're signing everything that we need to? Um, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And if, thank you for uh, giving us those checks, this, this year's checks. But everyone, I think we remember mm -hmm. to fill out their health care declaration. So, I keep that one in my truck because I always always forget one. Hey, Cal, are you having a, a party for you? Apparently so. Well, make sure you let us all know. I love a party. Right <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no idea. It's a toddler party. Oh. So I have no idea. I just <laughs> I get told where to show up. <laughs> That's what I get. You're happy to have it back now. No, 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 it's fine. Well, you know, I sold it. For you. you did? Yeah. So you <laughs> I didn't have one. So <laughs> have it. It's fine. That's what you're nice. Maybe I have one. Well, there's only two. 
Oh. And you weren't looking. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering if you were looking at my papers. Awesome. Old meeting looking at stuff. Didn't pay attention. Well, no, no, I kept looking over at Cali. <laughs> when your your uh, packet, you may have seen the library budget proposal as well. Make sure you have that. We'll talk about that next time. Um, yeah. Good. Along with the assistant, the new no, newest new pack. Very good. Trusting you guys with that. All right, so I think we're uh, we're all set. So I uh, move to close the meeting. Second. All right. All in favor. Of all right. Thank you, everyone. And we're going to shut down this. Thank you, Orca. All right. I think this worked um, much better this time. Recording stopped. The the owl eyes are kind of yeah. It's kind of creepy. Yeah. 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 I, the reason it wasn't there was something on the computer that I had to. It is the main thing. 18. I will not be here at the next meeting. We'll be slaying it. I'll be leaving it, I believe. What the? Be careful. Thank you everyone for a funny evening. I apologize, I had a draft. Oh. And, uh, okay. I got a name on the door. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Deputy District Attorney. Wow. Yeah. Think, what did she tell me? She had two, got two convictions last week. So she was right from the end of the. Um, she's from Moretown or right on the right on the opposite oh, side of the road. Yeah. Yeah. Sports. No. <laughs> No. I don't keep this stuff here. For me. Yes. Are we set? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think she's nice a, she's a yeah. worker for time anyway. Because she okay. did.